And hello, and welcome back to like uh, the uh, better part of a week later. Uh, okay, uh, a few things happened. Uh, I actually ended up going out of town, and that's what sort of stopped me from, you know, continuing last time. Because, uh, hey, a pandemic sort of done ish. So I was actually able to like go and do like a trip with some of my college friends again, which we hadn't done in like three years, and they look like different people now. It's amazing. Uh, but, uh, I wasn't able to actually, like, edit and upload stuff, uh, prior to that, or finish recording everything prior to that, so it's a bit later, and I also got home, and my internet was just destroyed. I actually think my internet might have gotten hacked, considering I, like, set up a new, because I thought the router was broken because it was really old, uh, and based on the behavior. And then I set up a new router, and it was fine for all of, like, ten minutes until I just set up the same Wi-Fi, uh, details again. And it destroyed itself again, like immediately afterwards. And I re factory reset it, set it up in a different way, and it's fine now. So that's a good sign. <laughs> Either way, the plan is, is that I'm going to finish this. I think I will be able to get this out for Thursday, Friday this week uh, in terms of uh, episodes and whatnot. And then after that, Trails into Reverie, which comes out on Friday. Yay. So... I am back again for like the 20th time. Okay, let's just jump back into it. What, were, what was happening again? I don't know if I can do this, but I do know one thing. Yeah, I do know exactly one thing at this moment. Zapsan is the greatest judicial assistant in the world. Oh, I should mute it. I should mute the TV. <laughs> Very well, the council for the defense will present evidence to support the claim made. The room that the people in the door of the window big storeroom was created after the event and not before. Oh, um... Uh, it does seem pretty big, so if I were to guess, it would have to show up in this. Take that! Yes, I do remember that line of logic I left it on. What are you? A print from the detective's inferno cameras again. My judicial assistant. Miss Suzata Mikotoba is an extremely intelligent and capable woman, which is why I never had any cause to doubt that she would have considered the scenario and made sure I had the necessary proof. And the necessary proof is this photographic print, Council. Yes, yeah, she also didn't tell us any of this, even though she literally fucking left, like, evidence with someone and never explained shit. Because... Apparently, she wants it to be difficult. This print shows a scene in the shop moments after the defendant entered the premises. Green. And it also shows the accused mercilessly wielding a gun in the direction of the defenseless broker. Uh, can we see... is the other one after the incident? Uh, okay, so yeah, that was after. Oh yeah, I can see it on there now. Got it. I didn't look at that closely last time. Uh, but, but more to the point. He pictures the storeroom door in the background. Let me see that print again. I don't believe it. This really is quite remarkable. The door to the storeroom. It's completely devoid of any people of any kind. Of any description. Ah! Mr. Graydon. You couldn't possibly have witnessed the crime you claim to have done. Because at the time it happened, there was no peephole in the door. In other words, your testimony is a catalog of lies! <laughs> Which means he never saw the door in the first place. At least he never saw it clearly, right? Because it does um, imply that he got the information from somewhere, whether from the Skulks or... I don't know, who else? Maybe, um... 
McGill did have some contacts that uh, he was able to rely on. And like the police force or some shit. Seems like he might have had that. Um, but that does mean that he never got a good look at it to know that it wasn't there before. And he was able to trust whatever information came from knowing that it was there. Or maybe he just like listened to the testimony. Maybe he listened, Maybe he was able to like listen to the testimony and figure that out. Okay, y you know what? Maybe I'm overcomplicating this. I'm satisfied the defense has substantiated his claims beyond all reasonable doubt. This witness's testimony was entirely fallacious. That is not the only thing we know beyond all reasonable doubt. My learned friend's assistance guilt can no longer be denied. The woman tampered with a crime scene. More importantly... Lord, there's more Lord Venzix? Yes, I would very much like ice cream right now. I actually... <laughs> sorry. I'm still in, like, slight vacation mode. I... <laughs> the defense may have established a reprehensible instance of perjury. But that is no proof that this man is the victim's killer. It is proof that he lied. I mean, everything else is the proof, isn't it? Yes, that's right. What? I, I was there at the scene. It's true. I was shot in the arm. It's true. But that is all. Yes, in fact, if you look at the circumstances, I am the victim here. Oh, please. Oh! I don't believe this the right as it stands now. I don't have any definitive proof that he is the culprit. But you don't need a fucking definitive proof. It's so, like... Still, he can't worm his way out of it now. Iris. You know what they say. There's no point locking the cat's door after the cat has bolted. Isn't that right, Runo? I mean, I, I don't know exactly what you're referring to, but he is, uh, the cat has been let out of the bag, as per se. Uh, in terms of, like, he's emitted a bunch of stuff via that testimony, as well as etc, etc. As Hurley always says, one lie begets another. No, uh, wait, that might have been a line I read for him in one of my stories. Well, no matter who said it first, you're right. Mr. Graydon, not only did he give false testimony to the court, the lie you told makes no sense. Makes no sense? What do you mean by such a remark? What you said in your testimony reveals that you know something you shouldn't have known. Oh, our reaction get Okay. Maybe I wasn't overthinking. In other words, there's a fundamental inconsistency in your statements. What? Objection! This is provocative talk, Council. Wouldn't you... Won't you enlighten the court? Explain this alleged inconsistency. Iris is right. One lie begets another. The inconsistency is revealed by the lies in the witnesses' statements. Show that Mr. Grayson acknowledges something he shouldn't have known uh, anything about. Namely... Ba -ba 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 I mean, yeah, the peephole. That's, like, what I was talking about. The bloodstains on the coat. Okay, that would be... F like, what the fuck would that happen? What would happen with that one? The point is not that you lied in your testimony, Mr. Graydon. It's the nature of the lie you concocted that is so revealing. You're not making any sense. Then let me ask you a simple question. How is it, Mr. Graydon? That you knew of the existence of the people in the fur in the storeroom door. What? Well, obviously I. Ah, uh, uh, the cut caught your tongue, witness? The people in the door was made after the incident occurred, and once I returned to the shop, having failed to catch the two burglars, Scotland Yard's investigators arrived immediately. Since that time, the police have been at Windabanks constantly, carrying out their investigation. I guess it really hasn't come up much until this point, right? 
Because, like, it was definitely there when we found it, but we haven't testified to the fact that there was a people. Like, it's been very, like, not relevant to any of the previous case details, right? So I, I don't think it... I don't remember it coming up prior to him bringing it up, I guess. Uh, isn't that right, Inspector Gregson? Um, well, uh... Yes, of course, um... Uh, Place Jacques Vaud Bond articles my lads have to, uh, thoroughly examine them all. So I gave the orders to have the wor uh, officers working around the clock and drifting, uh, so we can get all through it. And consequently, there's no way that you, Mr. Graydon, could have gained access to that shop. Therefore, you shouldn't have known anything about the people in the storeroom door. So the fact that its existence forms the basis of your testimony is completely inexplicable. Objection! And yet, the fact remains that Mr. Graydon did maintain that he witnessed the crime take place through the people in the door. Worth is that possible? Um, uh, could I have a word, please, Lord Van Zies? Speak, Inspector. Uh, it's just that I really ought to be getting back to the station now to put in my report. Uh, there's really uh, nothing more I can add to this testimony, sir, but if it's all the same to you. Permission to nine. Oh, uh -huh. It's not all the same to me, Inspector. It's not. You will remain exactly where you are until this trial concludes. <sighs> oh, of course, sir. Mr. Graydon. Okay, so they're, they're telling me that it has something to do with him? Because he doesn't want to, like, actually talk? It, did he tell him? Is this, like, part of the plea deal? deal? Like, fucking help us and we'll, like, get you out of this? I'll, like, give you, like, a way that you can concoct a lie? Like, oh, that's, like, so sort of shitty of Gregson. If, like, he'd be really willing to do that. It's not even, like, a plea deal, too. Like, where he, like, admits the shit. It's just like, fuck, I'll, like, rig this system so I can, like, get you on my side. You shouldn't have known about the existence of that people. Which can only mean that you must have been informed about it by somebody else. Objection! Stop there, my learned friend. You realize, I trust, that the words you just uttered have extremely serious implications. Yes. But the defense believes that the details about the case that Mr. Graydon claims to have seen must have been revealed to him by a certain person before his testimony. Well, there's like one option if we're gonna go down this road. And we're like, if we're actually gonna say like serious implications and whatnot. And uh, all that fun stuff. And in fact, considering a particular clue we have, there's only one person that it could be. Um, particular clue we have? Who gave the witness details of the crime scene to facilitate his false testimony? Obviously, Suzato. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 it seems. Not these guys, obviously. They, were, they wouldn't have known either. Lord Van Zeek's unlikely. Though he could have technically prepped the witness and gave him information. Uh, but they do feel like they're purposely leading me to this answer. Take that! The truth is... It can only have been you, Inspector Gregson. Ah! Uh, me? Objection! You had better have some, some uh, sort of proof to substantiate such a rash claim, my learned friend. Consider the fact that we've only been aware of Mr. Ashley Graydon's identity for the last few hours. We learned of it through... Uh, we learned of it only during the case of, in the trial today. Right, I guess he didn't have time to prep a witness. Okay. Indeed. Preparations for his testimony were made with a great urgency during our hour-long recess. While well, the police executed the subpoena and brought the man here from the communication station. And until that time, Mr. Graydon would, ha uh, would have had no idea, no inkling that he would suddenly be required to appear in court. Are you suggesting that until such time he was summoned? Yes, my lord. Until then, it's reasonable to assume he knew nothing of the people. It was only once Mr. Graydon was in the stand that he realized his position. Right. 
I don't remember if we talked about the people otherwise, but the fact that we're going this route does like imply that like we probably didn't talk about it in any other capacity until we brought it up, right? Uh, that he would have to defend himself against the accusation that he was the third uh, intruder. He was suggesting to the court that while his, this trial was in progress, that he received that information so that he could commit murder in order to save his skin. Exactly. And the only person with knowledge of the investigation that, had, uh, that he had any contact with is you, Inspector Gregson. This is an outrage. Why would I be giving away detail of investigation to this fella, eh? Hmm. I was summoned by his lordship, uh, to his lordship James during the recess in any case. Had you forgotten that? My true. I had a number of questions regarding the events that transpired at the bomb brokery. What you mean? The first time these two laid eyes on one another was after proceedings resumed following the recess. Since then, they've been in full view in the stand, where such illicit discussions couldn't possibly have occurred. Ah, could have they? Ooh, I just remembered something, Runa. What is it, Iris? There was one time before, wasn't there? I think it was when Guinea was testifying. Oh yeah, now that you mention it. When the bailiff was dispatched to retrieve Mr. McGeoda's music back from the scene of the crime. That's it. It was during that testimony. Yeah, I mean, I remember finding it strange at the time. And we, like, had to, like, call it out, too, so. It would have been possible for you, uh, for you to give Mr. Graydon the information he needed then. Now, Torag, you're making all this up. Now, I'm a respectable Scotland Yard inspector for crying out loud. Why would I do something like that? Why would I be giving away confidential details to the likes of this bloke? I mean, Lily, you wouldn't have had any reason to do something like that for no gain. But perhaps it was part of a deal of some kind. Then it starts to make more sense. Ugh. What's a deal, Council? I wonder if perhaps, in exchange for details about the people at the scene of the crime, Mr. Green agreed to give a certain something to the inspector. I'm sure I need not remind the inspector that, if found out to be true, striking a deal of any kind with a witness would be considered a gross case of malfeasance. Well, well, I... Objection! It's becoming clear that jumping in with accusations is the Nipponese student's speciality. I... I don't do that! <laughs> but, with the stakes so high, the prosecution is not prepared to listen to baseless charges. It is incumbent on the defense now to present evidence in support of this diabolical claim. Evidence? Just what are you proposing that the inspector demanded of the witness in return? The court must see proof of this alleged deal. Oh, I mean like the second disc, right? If Inspector Gregson really did strike a deal with Mr. Graydon, then logically, there's only one thing he could have asked for. That must be it. Bruno, do you think it could be? Yes. It's the missing link that would join all the dots together in this puzzle. I must press you for an answer now, Counsel. What evidence explains the nature of this alleged deal the Inspector Gregson made with the witness? Okay, um... I mean, it's gotta be... One of these two. Uh, save just in case. Yeah, this gives more context at least. Take that! Inspector Gregson. Besides this murder, is it not true that you've been working on another very important case? What? What are you getting at now, Sunshine? Is it possible that this other top secret case is what's alluded to in this newspaper article here? The classified secrets being leaked overseas from the Ministry of Justice. Uh, how the bleed in Noah could you? I don't know who Noah is. <laughs> We discovered during the course of this trial the music box deposited at Windebanks by Magnus McGilden. 
a special music box designed to play two discs at once. It would seem very likely now that encoded on the pair of discs that were in Miyoda's possession are the leaked classified secrets. So I put it to you, Inspector, that in order to recover the second of the disc containing those secrets, you covertly made a deal with Mr. Graydon, which you exchanged the disc for details of the case. You... You little... Ah! Order! Order! On the day of the incident, when you met, uh, when we met you at Windowbanks, you said this. Taking whatever it is that McGill is under the yard. Thank you very much. Find it over. No, don't, don't give it to him. It's mine. That is mine. Sorry, Miss. But anything belonging to McGill that has to be taken as evidence now. Scotland Yard already knew at that time, isn't that right? That Magnus McGill was involved in the stealing of government secrets. Maybe that's why he was killed, too. Ah. My orders were. Recover the medium music and the secrets leak from the ministry. And to do it on the QT. Trigly Ashash. That explains why, when I presented this disc as evidence to the courts, you objected so heavily, I presume. Because you knew that it contained highly confidential information. I mean, not likely. I, I mean, I wasn't sure of it myself. I realize there's a possibility, that's all. Inspector, surely. Surely you're not saying that in order to acquire the second of these music box discs, you did indeed reveal confidential details of the crime scene to the witness. To aid in the betless man in giving false testimony. There's no other way that Mr. Graydon could have known of the existence of the people. It's the only explanation, a deal that was struck between the two men. Alright, I'm not trying that one. Objection! If, and I stress if, this sobering assertion turns out to be founded in truth. It would mean that the second disc is, as we speak, here in this very courtroom. Wait, what? In this room? How could he possibly make a claim like that? Because Inspector Gregson is a Scotland Yard detective. What? What's that supposed to mean, eh? As a seasoned policeman, the inspector will have approached this alleged deal with caution. Certainly, he would not have been uh, he would not have accepted a gentleman's agreement in this matter. No, he would have insisted on having the article agreed upon in the palm of his hand. Gracious, then you mean to say Well Maybe Maybe Inspector Gregson already has the item in question in his possession. Yes, the second is actually on his person. Yes! Oh my goodness. That's why he says yes for all those. <laughs> all this time, that's why they had him say yes. Just for that one. The defense demands that the inspector is searched at once. Definitely! They could only have struck a deal with each other when Guinea was testifying before. And Gregsy hasn't moved from the witness stand since. My lord, please. Order an examination of his personal effects immediately. Actually, no. Order an examination of everyone. Maybe they didn't hand it over yet. Like, the man seeks, like, he made that claim, but there's no guarantee that he actually, like, handed it over at that time. If they made a deal, it wasn't necessarily for that information. It could have been for getting him out of it. And he's just like, offered that information as part of a way to get him out of it. Well, Inspector. Ah, uh, this young lad wants to tone down his imagination. He's insulted me in my profession quite enough. He's gotten calm. Ah, uh, that... If, uh, put, if he'll put this matter to bed and spell any doubts about my involvement... Then I'll happily submit to a body search. He's going to agree to it? I presume you're aware of the precipice on which you now teeter, my learned student friend. You've made a most serious allegation against Scotland Yard here. No, I i mean, you're the one who made this specific allegation. Eve, following the search of the inspector's personal effects, no disc is found. 
you'll be deemed unfit for court service. The trial will end. And my country's government will, be formally, will formally demand of yours that you be severely reprimanded. That sounds serious. Indeed. You have a visiting student make such a defamatory remarks about a country's most senior police force. It's not something Her Majesty's government will be able to overlook. You're just threatening Rima because you're scared. The accusation is beyond serious. It must be prepared for grave consequences. It's true. I can't imagine Gregson would have accepted a gentleman's agreement for something so critical. The disc must have been physically uh, must have physically changed hands, which means the inspector uh, should have it. But somehow, something doesn't feel quite right here. I don't know, sleight of hand? Did he like pawn it off on someone? Else? Like we're assuming that. Very well, Council. You know the implications. Let me ask you one final time. Uh, yes, my lord. Do you still persist in formally requesting a search of the inspector's personal effects? Oh, I mean, save, but... You know, he was very forthright about, like, like being involved about some of the earlier events, and suddenly he was calm and like, oh, no, 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 none of this happened. He hasn't even denied it, technically, I think. Yes, the defense formally demands the search to be conducted. Well, don't say you won't want... Well, your typical Nibani stubbornness may well land you in hot water this time. Perhaps the lesson will do you some good. Fair enough. I've got nothing to hide. Uh, he, his demeanor changed quickly. I'm going to know that. Very well, then. Baylor, conduct a search of the inspector's personal effects, please. The defense demands a search, but not of, the, not of Inspector Gregson. What? Now what's all this? I'm the one you're accusing, aren't I? I thought you wanted to search me. No, no, Inspector, not you. Somebody else. What's the meaning of this, eh? Lawsuit at last, have you, sunshine? The court shouldn't have put up with this nonsense. You're being completely irrational. Yes, let's search. Be quiet, all of you. Rina is doing what you all told him to, and having the courage of uh, courage, and having the courage of his convictions. So you should respect that and listen to what he has to say in good faith, because that's the British way. What's that, young lady? Indeed, the court is now uh, is in awe of the defense counsel's conviction, and eagerly awaits his next words. What? Don't be so hasty, my lord. If I'm not mistaken about the things I've seen in court today, I'm fairly sure that I know who has that disc at the moment, and there's only one person it can be. Counsel, of whom do you request a search now? Okay, so it's definitely someone on this list. Um, so the, uh, we've been, so I don't think it's back on him. I, I wouldn't bet on that, because that would sort of like, okay, so if we wanted to establish this logic of ours, it wouldn't be on him. If we want, because he did say, like, yeah, they had to exchange hands at some point. So it's the guy that's probably next to him, if he had like a sleight of hand, because he hasn't moved. But the other people on the witness stand, which has been this guy, uh, sitting next to him. That. Shit, I should have saved, I should have saved. Of my lord, Mr. Nash Skulkin. I never. Ah, lord me. Me, him. Very well then, Baylor. Restrain the witness and conduct a thorough search of his personal effects. Uh, please, my lord! Inspector? Scotland Yard uh, has objected to this search. Objection! And uh, not so calm anymore! Unfortunately for you, Inspector, your objections carry no weight here. Huh? In this courtroom, only the prosecution and the defense have the authority to object. But, but Lord Van Zees, I have no idea what forces are in play that might influence your actions. Personally, I have no intention of obstructing the course of this trial. Ah! Really? Carry out the search. And now, oh, oh, it's on a mo. I, I, I don't know nothing. 
Nothing about no tears. Oh, wait, does he know? I got it. And so his butthole grew three sizes that day. <coughs> Here, my lord, in the witness's pocket, I found this. Oh, and that's another music box disc. I don't nothing, know nothing about it. Nothing. That is the second music box disc left behind by Magnus McEwen. Is it not, Inspector Gregson? Ugh. Ah! You know, if you just admitted it was what it was, then we might not have to like, like, okay, if you admit what it is now, at the very least, we might not have to like play it in court to demonstrate what it is. Mr. Skulkin, what have you to say for yourself? Uh, Gordon Bennett, I mean, just uh, Gordon Flame and Bennett. I swear to know nothing about that disc. Honest to God. Also, will you please explain what exactly is going on here? The alleged deal that was struck between this witness and this detective, no? Without question, my lord. Then, for pity's sake, why on earth was this man in possession of the disc that the inspector traded for information? Inspector Gregson is a shrewd, calculating man who rarely loses his composure. But at one particular point in this trial, he exhibited some unusual behavior for a brief moment. You mean like most of the time he was talking? I don't recall. What unusual behavior? I mean, I picked him because he was next to him. He freaked out when we talked about it, then he got calm. Which implies that the only time he would have, like, switched to being like, Okay, no, I got this, would have been when, like, he put it in his pocket, which would have had to have been whoever he was next to, right? That's my logic, at least. It was, yes. During my cross-examination of Mr. Graydon. Tell me, Mr. Graydon. When he left the Palm Burgery that night. Oh, yeah, like, he fucking was, like, getting physical with him. Was it by any chance with the second disc in your jacket pocket? I admit to nothing of the sort. While Mr. Graydon answered my questions, the inspector appeared to have grabbed Nash Skulkin by his coat and was shaking him violently. Oh, yeah, he did and all. Thought me and I was gonna fuck it enough, I did. Yeah, that was a bit random. Okay. Well, I was wishing I'd been born as my brother, I was. Which brother? What exactly happened to make the detective attack you like that? I got a clue. He just suddenly turned and grabbed me and... Uh, grabbed me a whistle and he just started shaking me. One of the places you mentioned that third gun when we got you down to the station, that's why he said. You got it right in my ear hole, you did. Yeah, it's still the robin now. I, uh, yeah, I forgot about that. But they are next to each other still. The way the detective behaved then was extremely out of character. But looking back now, it must have been that he did it, uh, then that he did it. That was the opportunity Inspector Gregson created for himself in order to hide the disc. We plus my wig. He hit it. You... But I'm afraid I failed to comprehend the motive here. The detective had acquired the disc he was after. Why on earth would he then proceed to hide it in another man's pocket? This is a court of law. He could have submitted the item as evidence. It would appear, my lord, and the inspector was not at liberty to do that. Why am I not? As the man himself revealed earlier, his current assignment has some special conditions. Hush, hush. A top secret assignment, is it? As far as we are aware, the information certainly comes from confidential government communications. It would seem that if information were to be revealed in court as evidence, it would be problematic. Does that sum up the situation, Inspector? Uh, I'm operating on direct orders from the Ministry. I'm afraid I'm not at liberty to answer that question. So, realizing there's a chance that you may be searched here in court, you took steps to hide the disc that you had acquired from the witness. Oh, does this mean? 
He only pretended to attack Mr. Skokin in order to get close enough to him to slip the second disc into his pocket. So it was all pretense. <sighs> no, no, Inspector Gregson. I knew Mr. Graydon. Are you about to admit to the accusation made against you of this alleged deal? Admit to it? Yours truly, please. Mr. Graydon. Clearly our Eastern ver uh, visitor has an uncommonly active imagination. However, there's no proof that I passed the gist to the inspector. Objection! But, but then, how do you explain the reason why you just knew about the peephole? I'm under no obligation to explain. What? Yes, I lied in my testimony. That's I admit, so sentence me accordingly. That is all I admit. Murder? Making <laughs> government secrets. Striking a deal with the detective. All of it is this young Eastern man's fancy. I have no idea what any of that is about. You... I mean, if he's not willing to provide an alternative explanation, then don't you sort of have to go with our speculation here? It is by and far the most likely. What, what, what about you then, Inspector Gregson? Do you admit to making a deal with Mr. Graydon in order to acquire the disc? He's not at liberty to say? Ladies and gents of the jury, as a Scotland Yard inspector, I will declare this and nothing more. I am acting in the best interest of the country. Whatever I've done, it's been in the name of justice. So, as members of the public of the fine country, I'd like to think that justice will be your guiding light when you're making your decisions. Wow, that's a fun. Mm, this is quite a quandary indeed. Rarely have I encountered such extraordinary tumultual in, uh, tumultualness in the concluding of a trial. Nevertheless, in the absence of any further evidence to be presented, I believe it to be time that we put the matter uh, to the jury for the final leanings. And now, as a fellow servant of the Queen and Country, I must say I have sympathized with the old inspector. But he's not denying it. Like, sympathize with his... <laughs> he just looked over at the maid, of course he did. Yes, I, I, I definitely sympathize with him. <clears throat> for sure. I mean, just because you sympathize him doesn't mean you can't acknowledge the fact that he totally... Like, like he's basically half admitting it. He's just not admitting he did anything wrong. And he's not admitting it specifically. And you're the jury. You don't have to say, oh, we don't have definitive proof. That's, like, way more likely based on what we've heard. You are allowed to do that. Yes, he's a dependable man, I'm quite sure. In service, one becomes a good judge of character. Oh, even crossing your eyes doesn't help when it comes to looking at this case. It's all blurred to me. Well, as a fellow professional, I like to put my faith in the detective, really. Uh, Creighton is a highly skilled operator. Stop. Currently, per, uh, presence of idols. Stop. Detective has very much trust in eyes. More than this, I cannot say. I don't believe it. The six jurors are... They're going to believe Gregson? If they declare this their decision now. Is Kenny going to be found guilty? I mean, they could put their faith in him and also acknowledge, yeah, no, he's... Like, it happened, but he's doing it for good. And also acknowledge, like, because we're not trying to, we're not adjudicating uh, whether this other trial, this other case, right? We're not adjudicating any of that. We're adjudicating the murder element of this one, right? He already has the disc. It's not like there's, he's saying, uh, vote her guilty or else I won't get the stuff I need. If I don't manage to produce something, def uh, some definitive evidence right now, then we're going to lose. Either some proof that Graydon killed Mr. Windebank or stole those government secrets. Or some evidence to force Gregson into admitting that he struck a deal with the witness. Well then, counsel. I think it's time to impose on the uh, I impose on the jurors to declare their final decisions. No? That is, unless you have some compelling evidence you have thus far not presented to the court. If I let the judge call on the jurors to announce their leanings, Kina will be found guilty. 
So there's no choice then. You have to throw some evidence at them. This is it now. It all comes down to this. Could I present evidence against Gregson or Graydon? Hot damn. Okay. Definitely save. Ah, <sighs> okay. So what do we want to do here? So if they vote not guilty, they're basically saying that Gregson's saying, nope, none of this has to do with anything. Just, you know, uh, ignore all that stuff being claimed. That's what we're trying to. Because like I said, it doesn't need to be ad about adjudicating that other case. It needs to be about adjudicating this case, right? So we need to create that link between that, like, that's probably what happened because uh, they were doing all that shit. <sighs> they also seem pretty trustful in Gregson. So if we're picking between the two, okay, let's think about picking between the two. So if we're picking between the two, we're not leaving to the jury. They basically told me not to do it. That would be very interesting if that was the case, though. Do I just trust them? That would be very interesting if that was actually the choice. That, like, like it could be, like, all that stuff that was leading up and leading me to was just, like, a misdirect. And it actually does want me to, like... That would be very interesting, but I doubt it. Because that's not typically how these games are written. Um, they seem to have trust in Gregson. They don't necessarily have trust in him. So, ultimately, what we need to do is we don't need to adjudicate all that other stuff right now. What we need to do is we need to be able to link... Uh, I don't know what evidence we'd use, but the fact that they, like, trust Gregson means we the weak link in there, in that, is probably more Graydon, at the very least. I have the save. I have the save. Mr. Graydon, there's one final piece of evidence I would like you to see. Hm. You misguided fool. Whatever you intend to show me now, you'll be wasting your time. I have nothing left to lose. I assure you, I would admit to nothing. This is my last chance. Looks like I'm going to have to force his hand here. So what we're trying to establish is a connection that implies... Graydon knew about that second music box, because we've only seen it on two other people and not involved in him. So in that case... Sorry, not the music box, the second music disc, but the box... No, oh, that's on my mind, though. One final piece of evidence to get him to admit to the deal he clearly struck on the stand. Oh, it was, uh... It wasn't pre pre presented as evidence. But... But, 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 we know... Uh, this is what I'm thinking. Uh, just thinking this through. The only thing that comes to mind that connects him to the music box... Or to the music disc is the music box, right? So, if the second music disc is here... And we have established before that the music boxes are incredibly specialized. I think we can establish that that music box, that music disc does go to the box. And if we can connect to that music disc to the box more directly. Maybe by playing it or something like that? Then at that point, we could probably establish that because we have connected him to the music box. We can connect him to that. Which won't necessarily adjudicate the other thing. But we could, uh, at the very least demonstrate that the story is likely true without like going after Gregson as the point of contact which just puts the jury's eyes on him and not whether Gregson did some have something bad because that's not really our interest here he did what he did it's sort of fucking sleazy but uh clearly the jury thinks that he just did it in the public good which he probably did it's still sleazy but you know take that is that Mr. McGuda's Peculiar Music Box Council? Yes, with the disc already in place, ready to play. I think perhaps now would be a good time to listen to the sound produced by the music box again. Only this time. With the second disc we've just discovered, set in place as well. This, this disc council! This also might uh, force Gregson's hand. If, like, we're actually playing, like, confidential information. No, uh, wait! I, I can't let you do that! Why not? But, because, uh, well, uh, because it's got nothing to do with this case. That's why. Objection! Not true, Inspector. Huh? 
The defense has already proposed. But the sounds heard by the court earlier from this music box were part of a Morse code message. We know that Morse code compromises two distinct tones. The defense believes that the second disc contains the second tone needed to complete the message. And now we have a chance to confirm that theory. We're crying out loud, sunshine. We're taking... We're talking about state secrets here. Yeah, but you're denying that. If you go letting the whole courtroom hear confidential information like that, it's, it's treason. Then do you admit the charge that in order to protect those state secrets, you engage in unlawful dealings with a witness? You know... Man. You let that secret information out into the public domain. You know, You'll be making an enemy of the entire British government, you idiot! Objection! Let's not forget, Inspector, that you, a Scotland Yard officer, leak confidential case details to a witness. That you continue to lie to the court, and all because, by fair means or foul, you're determined to your duty. Okay, we're going after Gregson way more than I thought we would. Well, by fair means or foul, I'm prepared to do mine. Don't you dare. I will stop at nothing to protect my clients. I don't care who I make an enemy of. My lord, if you please. The court must hear the sounds made by the music box. Come on, Van Zies. For Pete's sake, stop him. Objection! Inspector, you should know my methods by now. I am a prosecutor. I am no Scotland Yard puppet. Ugh. In this courtroom, my duty is to the law. So let me propose a toast. To uncovering the truth. By fair means or foul. No! Ah, at least he's committed to the truth. Very well. Uh, very well. The defense stands here, uh, and that of the prosecution is made very clear, I feel. Now, go all in accordance with the defense's request. Well, now listen as the music box is set in operation once more. It's time. The second disc in place. And both discs playing simultaneously. Okay, let's do this. It's... it's unmistakable now. It's Morse code. Alright, alright, admit it! Whatever you want, but for the love of God! Shut the bloomin' box up! I'm surprised, like, like, he just had to cooperate, I'm gonna note that. If he wanted to be as hush-hush as possible, he just needed to be like, Hey, Judge, can we, like, like go back to that? I, I like, admit everything to you, but... Instead, he got it, like, in a public fucking form for everyone to hear. Let me ask you again, then, Inspector Gregson. Did you, or did you not, strike a deal with the witness next to you in the stand, Mr. Ashley Grayson? Specifically, did you furnish the witness with confidential case details in exchange for this music box disc? Did you reveal the existence of the peephole in the bomb broker's storeroom? Door, Inspector. I did. Stop! What are you doing, man? It's all exactly like the young Eastern noise said. When the drive resumed at the recess and we were stood here and stand together, that's when he approached me with the deal. When he approached you. Okay. Shut up, you imbecile! Shut up! You, you were the detective who turned up at the bomb broker the other day, aren't you? I may have something you're looking for, Inspector. With me at this very moment. So how about a trade? I suggest you accept. More information that may make very certain individuals uncomfortable will soon be very public indeed. I couldn't let that information go uh, become public knowledge. Not under any circumstances. I am curious what that Morse code like actually translates to. Like some steamy erotica of the queen or king or whoever it is at this time. <laughs> so I accepted the man's proposal. Don't know details about the case. I should have been put him in. Uh, should have put him in the clear. Leave on the star room door. And the blood stains on the overcoat. 
By giving false testimony, this witness intended to have the defendant wrongly accused of murder. I also forgot how confident he was about that blood, uh, blood stain thing. Inspector, you knew that. Yet you still revealed those details to facilitate the witness's perjury. I didn't. But then it turned out the people had only been made that night after the incident took place. Hmm. Scotland Yard wasn't aware of that, uh, if I'm perfectly honest. Well, Mr. Graydon, what do you have to say for yourself? Ugh. Ugh. There's nothing, and no one left for you to be able to hide behind. You struck a deal with the inspector in order to escape conviction of a very serious crime. Namely this. You are the third intruder who broke into the Palm Burger in the night in question. And you perpetrated the murder of the pri proprietor, Mr. Pop Windebank. You. You. Uh oh. Traitor! Oh! That's gonna break before you can choke him. Bailiff! Bailiff! Restrain that man! At once! At once! That's it then. It's all over. Uh, this is gonna be, like, like, <laughs> I will say, Gregson handled it poorly. Because now it's gonna, like, it actually is in the public domain. In, like, a public court. I'm sure there are reporters. Um, oh, I assume this is Graydon. I despise my life growing up. The slums are vile places. I was cursed from birth, born into poverty, the son of a penniless artisan. My parents did nothing but quarreled all day long. Little, with little money they had, that, uh, what little money they had was never spent on me. So I said about studying to better myself. And one day I escaped from that hellhole. You eventually became a communication officer. I admire your determination. But then you decide to try to sell government secrets. Why? This is obvious. Because I wanted money. Even now, years later, the nightmares of my life in the slums wake me up in the small hours. I want to drown them out with more money than anyone who lived in that squalor could ever imagine. And one day, I met him. Mr. Magnus McGilton. You're a fiend with a quiet talent, so you are. I have money to throw you away if you're interested. All you need to do is go along with me a little plan now. I was to steal the Ministry's telegraphic message logs. I mean, Gilded would buy them for a handsome sum. As I was responsible for inspections of the Ministry's communications office. Oh, it was a simple enough task. The lower of the devil's offerings. How easy it is to succumb. But you must surely have realized the seriousness of the crime you are committing. And for that reason, I took great lengths to ensure that my actions were... traceable. By using the music box. <laughs> my father was a brick maker. But my mother divorced him when I was still a child. Yes, Mr. Mason Milverton. That's right. He was very skilled with his hands. He'd once been a music box maker his apprentice. I imagine the skills would be sufficient to create a machine that could, uh, could generate Morse code. So I sought out my father again. Employee services. It was the first time since I uh, left the slums ten years earlier. Who 
look at you, Ashley. What a fine gent you've become, eh? It was a different man to the one in my memory. A thin, frail old man. But poverty had never broken him. Never corrupted him like it had me. I was sure that he wouldn't help me if I told him the real reason. So I made up a story. I got some work for you, father. I need some music box this made. Music box is exact. A musician friend of mine has written some music he wants to sell to the public. I brought the score with me. There are two, actually. I'm delighted, son. It's been 20 years since I did any work like this, though. Fetch my tools, would you? They're in the loft. And that's how I had him make the two discs. And it was only those two discs? How did the government secrets get leaked if he only had done, like, this first set of them? Was there, like, someone before that had got caught that Megyota was also working with? They're buying spitting information in tune. We were taking considerable precautions in Dean. I was to protect myself as much as anything. I meant I could deal with Megyota in two separate transactions. The first involved the first of the two discs in the music box for playing them. I exchanged them with Megyota for ten guineas. Then, on receipt of the second disc, he would pay a thousand guineas. So, what happened on the Omnibus two months ago? That was the second part of a deal. The exchange of the second disc. Yes. I sold the man information that way a number of times already. Okay, so it wasn't the first. But it seems he became reluctant to part with his money. But that doesn't quite make sense, Mr. Graydon. But why was it that the Omnibus, uh, on the Omnibus two months ago? Your father, Mr. Milverton, was the one dealing with Mr. McGill and not yourself. When I received the thousand guineas after my first completed dealings with Mr. I decided to give two hundred to my father for his troubles. Enough so to, like, raise his fucking suspicions and be like, oh, I want in on this. Uh, but my father realized something was amiss. In time, he worked out that I must be involved in something dubious. And when he did, he said to me, Next time there's an exchange, you'll let yourself, uh, let your old man do it, understand? Otherwise, I won't take your money anymore. <sighs> that was my father's way of dealing with it, I suppose. Lime into the omnibus and over the second skin. Take the money from me, Yodin. That's it. He had no idea what was actually on the disc I'd asked him to make. He never knew. Just like I'll never know why everything went so horribly wrong that night. All I know is that the disc was taken from him. And he never returned home. It's only then that I found out what sort of monster Mikyoda really was. So after ten years of not once uttering it, I swore my father's name. To exact revenge. Revenge? Oh, did you do the fire too? Oh, has anyone with even the remotest knowledge of the man will know doubt be able to imagine? McGillian brought all his wealth and influence to bear in the most despicable of ways. To crush any semblance of justice in his trial. The crime scene was tampered with, the evidence was fixed, and the witnesses were bribed. That trial two months ago was a farce from start to finish. My feet had barely touched British soil back then. And I walked into that hornet's nest completely unaware of the sinister background to it all. I made plenty of money out of my dealings with Megyota by then. So I spared nothing in my arrangements two months ago. I knew exactly who to hire. If you're willing to pay the price, there are people in the city willing to do anything you ask. Megyota himself had shown me that. Are, are you saying that? I think you have the picture now. After he twisted everything to his favor in this courtroom to ensure that he walked free. 
I took matters into my own hands and delivered the justice that monster deserved. A tragic accident following the trial here two months ago was blind and executed by yours truly. He killed its death that day. It was caused by this man. Everything is ready, sir, if you'd like to follow me into the courtroom. Someone who's hired her. Huh. Ah, it must be back in tracks now. It's time for the inspection. I'm going to examine the omnibus again, so I'm told. I if I can be present for, uh, for it myself. Ah, uh, bait to lure him into going to the omnibus. So that policeman who came to tell McGill that he could examine the omnibus again. That's right. An imposter. Hired by me. You to use his word to manipulate the trial. He paid people to adulterate the omnibus with all manners of false evidence. He threatened witnesses to lie in their testimony. So I gave the man a taste of his own medicine. Once the omnibus was doused in paraffin. One of my sham policemen ushered McGilded inside and sent him on a one-way journey to hell. An eye for an eye. And that is how I avenge my father's death. Yes, but uh, sir, this is a Wendy's. We never asked that question. <laughs> like, like, we didn't even like get to the point of like assuming that you did anything like that. I guess he's just that beat. He's just like, okay. Let's get it all out there. The spine chilling accountant <laughs> But that wasn't the end of it for me. There was a loose end, you see. A loose end. Yes. I should think it's obvious. The second disc. Which my father had taken to, uh, to exchange with McGeodin. Oh, yes. There was indeed no mention of it in the man's trial two months ago. Clearly because it had been removed from the scene of the crime. When I realized it was missing, I remembered something. Something from the first time I dealt with McGildin. It's the first of the two discs, and the music box you need to play them. Well, look at that now. What an ingenious little invention. So then, as promised, ten guineas for you, young man. What's this? From the bank's pawn brokery. Hi, it's this pawn broker sticker, so it is. You can use a team and article I've deposited there for you. So there's no need to give a name. Just hand over the ticket and uh, tell the fiend the watchword. I'll put a jewel in pawn for you. And fetch a good ten guineas if you sell it. Uh, so it will. I've never heard of a pawn brokering being used in quite that way before. Have you not, Mr. Greiton? London spawn brokers are very useful places, you know. Each one is like an extremely secure vault. So I knew that if I had taken steps to hide that disc, then it would be in that pawn brokery somewhere. And on that night he killed my father, he must have entrusted the ticket to someone. Yes, to Gina. Hmm. I remember now that when he first met you at Winnebanks that afternoon two days ago, that you had a description of Mr. Strayed written down. How did he know who you were looking for? In the trial, that pickpocket's testimony was clearly peculiar. Anyone could see that. I realized immediately that she was another Megudit's pawns. That she must have threat uh, that he must have threatened her somehow. I was fairly convinced it would be her who had the ticket. So I decided to make some inquiries. I had a strong suspicion the girl would come out of the woodwork on the redemption uh, deadline. And he was absolutely right. And yes, sure enough, she did. All I needed to do was wait until the girl went to the banks to redeem the articles. Unfortunately, she redeemed only McGilded's overcoat and the one disc that was in the pocket. 
The Alan Bolton music box with the second disc inside was missing. Because it had already been forfeited two days earlier. I was unaware of that fact. Had I not been, I could have avoided my nighttime excursion. Meanwhile, as our investigation into stolen government secrets was progressing, we picked up on the fact that Megyota was involved. By Inspector, you've recovered fast. My orders here uh, were to recover the stolen information as quickly as possible. So we saw Gather in the fellow's possessions and examined whatever we could to, uh, lay our hands on. We had a full-scale investigation going on in the yard, but we had to keep it as quiet as we could. And then, when the inspector here took the disc from me in the palm burglary that day, I became nervous. I'm sure that the music box in the second disc was still there in the shop somewhere. So I knew that it was a race against time. I had to find those articles before the police did. So that's what prompted you to break into the place that same night. With the help of your old friend, the Skulkin Brothers. What happened that night in the pawn brokery? I can only describe as a nightmare. While Nash and Ringo were searching the counter, I located the music box I saw to Mikilda on the shelves of the forfeited articles. And the second disc was inside. Yes, I slipped it into my pocket with a very deep sigh of relief. And then, something entirely unexpected happened. A gunshot rang out in the shop, and I felt a sharp pain in my left arm. The broker fired his gun, and the bullet pierced your limb. Yes, exactly. But unfortunately, I decided to bring my own gun to with me that night, just in case. Before I knew what was happening, I would fired back. The man had already turned to flee. I'd intended to fire in his direction, much less kill him. But unfortunately for both of us, the bullet hit home. It struck him in the middle of the back as he fled through the storeroom door for refuge. Sorry, sorry, Tail. That took place in the blink of an eye. I don't imagine Nash and Ringo even realized what had happened at first. I was terrified. I have learned. And that's the whole story. That is everything that happened at Winterbanks on that wretched night. You know, he is more respectable than I gave him credit for. I mean, it's almost entirely based on the fact that, like, he he was the one who killed uh, McGillian. But yeah, that's a lot of life sentences there. Um, capital punishments. Leo, you called McGilded a monster. A man who used his wealth and influence to distort the facts and escape justice for the crimes of murder. What tragic irony. But what you have done is exactly the same. You've become the very monster you saw and despised so deeply in McGilded. Yes, I think I have. He does have like a properly, they, they did a good job of making him look like pitiful via his sorrowful look there. Well, this has been a long and exhausting trial. However, it would seem that at last we have arrived at the truth. Inspector Gregson, what of Ashley Graydon? He's been restrained, my lord, and is being escorted to the yard. They'll be charged with the murder of Mr. Winterbank. And the scene of government secrets. Very good. And you, Inspector. Regrettably, you will have to face charges yourself. Okay, good. Fucking good. Like, Gregson, sure, I'm sure you did it for noble reasons, but fuck, you can't, you cannot be above the law. That's my general opinion on, like, police and whatnot. That, um... 
they should be held to even higher standards considering the uh, extra legal sort of like authority they're given, all things considered. They should be held to higher standards, basically. Uh, and if they're held to lower standards than the normal person, then that's like fucked in all sorts of ways. So, good. Gregson, uh, I, ho I hope things go well for you in all things considered, but actions are actions and there does need to be, you know, it's the point, right, of law and like taking those actions, you took that risk. Uh, yes, my lord, of course. It transpires that you were complicit in helping a criminal escape justice. The fact remains whether or not you were doing so in the line of duty. The crime is a serious one, Inspector. An inexcusable. Now to defend it, Miss Gina Lestrain. Uh, uh, yeah. It is time for the final adjudication. Is the jury ready, Mr. Foreman? Yes, sir. Yard Depp Squadron standing by, sir. This is really it now. The last push, the final call, the finishing whistle. My men are ready to deliver their verdicts. Thank you, Mr. Foreman. Very well, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. You will now declare your final decisions to the court. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Yay! Haha! <laughs> well, that's the stuff. I'm off the hook! <laughs> Don't act like that, Gina! Oh my goodness. Finally, Bruno, you finally managed to do it! Finally is the word. I wasn't really sure if we'd come out on top for a while there. Seems he was right. You're the best lawyer in the world! Mr. Lestrade, I'm not finished with you yet. Eh? Uh, what? Wait, what are you looking at me like that for? You perjured! Before you start enjoying your freedom, there are certain other crimes to consider. Hmm? Huh? Two months ago, in my courtroom, no less, you gave false testimony, did you not? And in relation to the crimes today, not only did you unlawfully enter Winterbank's bomb brokery, you also attempted to abscond with Mr. McGilda's property, it seems. But he was dead! I never done nothing of the sort! Oh my goodness. Of course not. It's not like you were gleefully wearing McGilda's coat in your cell yesterday or anything. Aww. Just when I was getting excited about throwing a party for Guinea this evening. Yeah, uh, I wonder... I wonder how bad that is. I, I have no idea, like, how long that would put her away. Turning our attention to the defense. Determining that, when played together, the music box and disc contained a message in Morse code was... Well, it was certainly a most unexpected revelation, Council. Why so, my lord? The prosecution was caught entirely off guard. In fact, I think we should have blown my loaded friend's courage here today. Oh my goodness. To demanding that government secrets be disseminated before the entire courtroom. <laughs> Are you like the toast, like too disseminating? Uh, haha. <laughs> Very sorry about that. It was the only way I could get Inspector Gregson to admit what he'd done, so... If I may say something on that point. Isn't that... It's, um, uh... About the sounds produced by the music box before. I do wonder, if that was really Morse code at all. What? Wait, what are you saying, madam? Oh, well, uh, it's just that I'm really rather fanatical when it comes to Morse code, you see. Uh, so much so that the whole world seems to be covered in dots and dashes to me, in fact. Goodness, madam, an unhealthy level of obsession one feels. But I must say that in my opinion, the sounds produced by those two discs... ...were nothing more than that. A meaningless series of two different tones. Oh, is she just lying? I mean, there wasn't much to it, but wait, is she just lying? Oh, you know, this might help Graydon and everyone. Like... What? What? Can that really be? It, it wasn't Morse code after all. Uh... I mean... 
I guess none of them checked it right. My lord, the vessel like listen to the music box again. No, 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 no. I don't know if you I'm not if you not. How many times do I have to tell you? Yeah, does this contain minist uh, ministerial secrets, sunshine? This courtroom is not in appropriate form to discuss the nature of the government communications. No McGill conspired to trade national secrets with our enemies. Secrets acquired from Mr. Graydon. Now that the man has admitted to his crimes, we have no need to pursue the matter further. I, uh, but it's really going to bother me. I think she's just giving us an out. I think she's just giving us an out. <laughs> I think she might have heard something spicy and it's like, nope. Uh, like, because she was, like, uh, persuaded by the, like, uh, loyalty argument that, uh, Gregson said, right? As were the rest of the, as was the rest of the jury. Uh, the straight. Uh, me, me, my lord? Yeah? That which you have seen today here in this courtroom has been extremely disturbing. Falsifying evidence, intimidation, perjury, a grim catalog of depravity. An appalling experience to befall any trial. Oh, come on. It ain't nothing I don't see in the, uh, most days' back slums. Where are you born in? If you're weak, you're barefoot. That's just how life goes. You know. But, look. I reckon I've worked something out today. The world ain't fair, but if you want it, change. You gotta start at home. You gotta change how you are yourself. Well, it's a very laudable lesson, you know, would say. I agree, look forward to the born again, Mr. Strayed, never gracing my courtroom with the presence again. Does someone say there's a second game? <laughs> She's not making any promises. Now, with regards to the murder of Mr. Pop Windebank, proprietor of Palm Berkey Business on Baker Street, I hereby declare that defendant, Miss uh, Kino Lestrade. Interesting uh, takeaway. Yay! Oh, that's actually a nice little. Uh, Oh, that's a nice little touch, and extremely dangerous that she can now shoot fireworks out of that instead of just... Oh, what what did she shoot out of that? I thought it was, like, smoke, right? Yeah, it was smoke. That was fireworks, which are way more dangerous. And it's on. Court is adjourned. Yay! Ooh. We two are left here. On a personal note, I must say you've surprised me, my far eastern friend. That felt way more, uh, sincere than before. When he said friend. Uh, oh. Despite being an Ebenese, you saw through the pretense of the malice that fastened within that Englishman. And at the same time, saw through the grime to the surprising hearts of your English client. You have a curious talent for judging character. Especially considering our very different cultures. I don't think there's anything curious about it. Hmm. Whether from the Empire of Great Britain or the Empire of Japan, we're all human beings. We're not so different on the inside. You know, I took this case for one simple reason. To knock swords with you once again, here in the courtroom. You did? When I encountered you for the first time two months ago, it reminded me. I'm toasting friendship and trust with another Nipponese. Only to find my trust betrayed. Whom you... I hope to look into the eyes of the man I once knew. And try to understand. Huh. Okay, there's a lot more going, under, going on under that surface. You mentioned something similar earlier today. About total betrayal at the hands of Japanese. What happened exactly? Well, you may ask. 
and one day, when the time comes, you will learn the answer, whether you like it or not. Was it Kazuma? He hasn't been to Britain before, right? Were, were, was, he, was Van Zeeks to Japan at some point? Because he mentioned swords, right? <laughs> like, like, what other options do I have to speculate, at least? Alright, then I'll wait for that day if I must. Coming to be known as the Reaper of the Bailey. In my retirement from the service five years ago. It keeps me calling some wonder if our meeting has had some deeper purpose. So farewell, my learned Nipponese fellow. Until we meet again. Hmm. That would make an interesting little thing going on there. And like he actually did know Kazuma. Uh, like what he talked about betrayal though. Then again, there's an entire another game with an entire new set. Oh, 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 wait, wait, the author guy. That's another Japanese person we've come across. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Susato's, um, Susato's father. Maybe. Actually, that probably makes more sense given uh, age and actual experience. He was just a legal, well, he was just a legal professor. Was he actually a lawyer? I have no idea. You know what? I don't know. It's done. It's over at last. But... Where's Iris disappeared to? Ah! Ah, okay. Congratulations, Gina! I knew it all along. I knew that you were innocent. Well, you did what you said, Mr. Naoto. You believed in me. Right up to the end. As odd as your name. It's hot about it. I told you I had faith in you, didn't I? No one ever ever has before, see? Kept a promise, I mean. Properly. That's awful. I figured something out today. All my life growing up in the slums. I've never trusted no one. But that's just because I've been scared of being stabbed in the back. I mean... The more you trust someone, the more it hurts when they let you down. Yes. I think I can understand that. After all, I had a taste of it in that trial two months ago. I chose to trust someone, and I paid for it. And that betrayal left a big scar. You know, though. You know. I worked something out quite recently, too. Trusting someone else is really an exercise in learning to trust yourself. Oh, and he had that big speech before that I lost. That's a shame. It actually is sort of... I, I, I sort of... I don't know. I don't really have the time to go back and just redo that. Like, even if it was just that part. I don't have the save either. Because I, over, I overwrote stuff. Uh, and when your gut tells you that it's the right thing to do and your trust is rewarded, there's no better feeling in the world. <laughs> I think I have to thank you for reminding me of that valuable lesson. Oh, uh, wow. Well. If you say so. Don't make a fat lot of sense to me, though. I'm trying to say that putting my faith in you, Gina, has been a real pleasure. Oh, God, out loud, pack it in! I suppose. I sort of feel the same way. I also like putting my faith in me. I mean, sometimes trusting someone else is, uh, you know, alright. Thanks. This is the way I see it, Ryunosuke. A defense lawyer is only as good as his faith in his client. And that comes down to how much faith he has in himself. After this experience, I'm starting to feel like I understand what you mean. Kazuma. Am I living up to your expectations? Am I turning out to be the lawyer you believed I could be? Pardon the uh, interruption. Oh, there it is. What the juice does a man have to do to be noticed around here, my dear fellow? Uh, th that voice. It's too late for uh, that voice now, Mr. Narodo. 
I've been standing here patiently in the corner of the room for an eternity. <laughs> yes, it was me all along, I would have said when you finally noticed me. But you people, with your incessant babbling. Ah, Mr. Sholmes? <laughs> yes, it was me all along. Uh, and then he gets tackled by the bailiff. I, I assume he'd been taken back to the hospital, to be honest. Indeed I was, but I managed to escape again. Oh, fantastic. I happen to be aware of one or two uh, foibles of the doctor who's standing to me. And merely made my knowledge of them known to the man, and he happily issued uh, me with a leave of absence. A very uh, above board. But enough of my adventures. It was a fine victory, Mr. Nahoda. Your tireless efforts are justly rewarded, I feel. Congratulations, Arnorda. As a close friend, I tip my hat at you. Oh, um, thank you. Hm. Some great detective you are. Better being cold as ice, maybe. Have I owed you in some way, Miss Listrain? Why have you been having snoozing your nice soft bed? Some of us have been fighting for our lives. Oh, uh, well, that board did cause me to lose a substantial amount of blood, it's true. So, I've indeed been feeling somewhat cold. Not perhaps as cold as ice, but <laughs> uh, have a feel. Oh, uh, could you take your hands off my neck, please, Mr. Sholmes? Why my neck? Ah, and in some way, I suppose. Congratulations are in order for you too, Miss Lestrade. What's that supposed to mean? Why so I've hearted? Well, naturally. It isn't my intention to alarm you, but... Uh, and a quittal and a trial with this particular prosecutor is perhaps a little precarious. Oh, well done, Mr. Sholmes. Not alarming in the slightest. Yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, the Reaper, you mean? As anyone who's found not guilty in a trial he's working on winds up dead anyway. Is that it? The very point I was trying to make. As exemplified by the fate of Mr. McGill did, in fact. Ah, but of course, I pay no attention to such irrational drivel myself. Why, why, why are you antagonizing her, Sholmes? Ah, yeah, well, it doesn't bother me. Oh, really? Of course not. The way I see it, the Reaper's a bit like him upstairs. Him upstairs? You mean, like God? Yeah, him upstairs know what's what, right? He knows what people are like on the inside. You won't have gotten the wrong end of the stick. There's some coves like uh, that bog trotter. We're rotten to the core. And at the end of the day, upstairs make sure he gets what they deserve. I I suppose that's one way of looking at it. Just hoping things will work out for the end. Uh, in the end, because that's only how it typically works. Divine justice is one thing, though. The Reaper taking matters into his own hands and claiming lives is another. Well, I ain't like the of this. I'm not, I ain't like the McGillies of this world. So I again. I got principles. See. The trait in you wishes to be admired, Miss Lestrade. Oi! Just give it a rest already. As I was saying, congratulations are in order. The news of your acquittal was very welcome news to me indeed. Let me express my heartfelt congratulations, Gina. Hmm. Well, um... Uh, there you are, Hurley. How long have you been here? Where did you go off to? Honestly, I, was, I went to the main entrance especially to meet you there. Ah, uh, Iris, my dear. I do apologize. But, well, wait until I tell you what happened. This bear made other fools of themselves. <laughs> what happened? Oh, I see. No, I have a pension for disguise. I was hiding in this room dressed as a bailiff. <laughs> At least I was didn't notice my presence at all. <laughs> I had no idea. Can you imagine, Iris? Oh, but you credited it. Hmm, I'm not sure, really. I beg your pardon? I'm sorry, Hurley, but you just don't have the weighty presence you seem to think you have. In fact, you really ought to be careful about that. It's gonna land you in trouble one day. What? <laughs> Is that like a reference to one of his stories? <sighs> I'll be careful. Ouch. 
anyway. It's such a shame. I was so hoping to throw a party for Guinea tonight. But you won't be able to come, will you? Ah, uh, don't look like I'm going to be going nowhere for a while. You're the judge's partner. I got stuff to make amends for, apparently. All them offenses. Once again, breaking and entering, taking the bog trotter stuff, uh, what was in luck, blah blah blah. Yes, I think you'll find that basically. Being a pickpocket is the main offense. Or the perjury. But diving ain't an offense, it's a job, innit? I don't think so. Still, so, it's got me thinking all this. Maybe I should start looking for another line of work. I mean, you didn't start off as a lawyer, did you, order? Well, no. But I was never a pig bargain. Well, anyway, I reckon I can make a change. I mean, do something uh, for all of them a lot like me from the slums. Something that makes a difference for them. That's a wonderful idea, Guinea. And I'm sure you can do it. <laughs> what is it? Oh. Nothing. The skin of the strain. The prison carriage has arrived, ma'am. Uh, come with me to the rear gate at once. Right. Well, uh, looks like I'm off then. Yes. Goodbye, Gina. And good luck. Um, uh, Oda? Yeah? Uh oh. Uh oh. I'm pretty sure I have time to prepare at the very least. Ah! What? What was that for? Uh, um. Oh, no. I mean. I don't know what to say, so. Ah, indeed. How the situation calls for a phrase. Hit. Uh, hitherto missing from your vocabulary, Mr. Strain. Huh? On occasions such as this. I would recommend a simple thank you. Oh. Oh yes, it's a good it's good advice, Guinea. Uh, I see. Well, come on, give it. Oh. Thanks. Oh no. Thank you for everything what you've done. For believing in me. Oh, it's no. That that that's they they oh they they did a really good job with expressions in this. I'll say that that is that is that feels heartfelt. Not at all. In fact, that should be my line. Thank you. you know. Well, there she goes. I wonder if I'll ever see her again. Well, well, quite the abdominal pick bus. Oh, I nearly forgot. I bought a paper outside. It's a special edition and this trial is all over the front page, especially the government secret part. Pickpockets innocence proven. Isn't it wonderful? Wait, is that really the... Should have shown it to Gina Iris. She would have been thrilled. Oh no, how silly of me. We'll have to visit her at the prison. Oh, but, uh, but anyway, would you like the, uh, the good news or the bad news? Ah, uh, not again. Well, what do you say, Bruno? Hurley? As usual, I think I'd rather get the bad news out of the way first. Absolutely not. I have no intention of listening to anything but good news. Oh. Just reject the premise in the first place. That does feel like him. And there you have it. How people answer that question says a lot about them. Doesn't it? Let's not go there. Alright then. Then maybe let's start with the good news this time. The rain has finally stopped. It was a record level rainfall, apparently. Well, this is good news indeed. We can journey back in greater comfort. Alright then. What's the bad news? The huge storm has left the seas very choppy. The channel in particular is awful, so sailing out of the Dover has been delayed by a day or more. Wait. Dover. That's right. If we head to the station immediately, we may still make time to wave Susie off. 
Oh. But, but, there won't be a train, surely? We couldn't be that lucky. Who do you think I am, Mr. Narhodo? M Mr. Schultz? I rushed to Victoria Station early and made arrangements for our special express. If we hurry now, we shall be there in time for dinner. And I know of a fine restaurant that serves the most delicious baked soul. I, I don't... The great detective does it again. <laughs> Indeed he does. I happen to be aware of a number of the rail transport director's foibles. What? I merely made no mind, uh, <laughs> made my knowledge of them known to the man and he happily laid on the locomotive El elementary. Okay, you are a blackmail extraordinaire. Just an idea, but it might be uh, wise to stop uh, manipulating people in that way. What are we waiting for then? To London, Victoria. Oh, are we actually going to get to see her again? And have her explain why she couldn't just tell us all the like important details. Oh, that is not dinner. Oh, that took somewhat longer than I had anticipated. Susie's bus a boat must be about to leave now. This is Otto. Where are you? Oh, over there, look! Looks like she's reading something. Wait! Hold it! Mrs. Otto, wait! What are you doing? Oh, it feels like it's been a while. Ms. Mr. Naruhoto, what are you doing here? We came as soon as we uh, could after the trial. I mean, we heard that the sailings are being delayed due to the bad weather you see. Oh, I... I see. Then... Then tell me, how did Gina's trial go? It... It went well. She was acquitted. She's facing more charges, but... <clears throat> Let's not talk about that now. That's wonderful. Really wonderful news. I just want everyone to hug at this point. Ah, Everyone's happy! <laughs> the book you were about to throw into the sea. It was your Encyclopedia of British Law, wasn't it? Oh dear. I was hoping you hadn't seen that. Uh, I think littering might be an offense. Capital punishment, by the way. I'm not worthy of practicing law in any way now. So, I was saying my final farewell. You were saying goodbye to law. You, suzada san Would I be correct in assuming? It's because of the people, Miss Suzanto. Yeah, she, I mean, like they said, that's like an actual, like, tampering of the crime scene, technically. I deliberately altered the scene of the crime, and then I tried to hide that fact. What I did is utterly unforgivable. Yeah, but why did you tell him and not just tell us the detail? Whatever. It's weird that she would, like, tell Sholmes the important shit. Well, I mean, like, half the important shit. I don't know. Well, that reminds me. I, I mean, I think the idea was just, like, tell him in case things went south. And she sort of expected they would. I don't know. If it, like, that's like the one thing that feels a bit eh, logically here. Uh, I didn't even come to have this, Susie. On the evening of the incident, Mr. Shams had invited Gina to dinner, if you remember. Oh, yes, we had a wonderful time. Well, Gina gave us a little introductory lesson, didn't she? To the art of pickpocketing, I mean. Oh, that was so much fun. I stole Runa's armband. Yes, please don't do that again, Iris. That band's very important to me. Well, if it's so important, you should pay more attention to it. I didn't notice for ages. <laughs> On a whim, I thought it would be fun to see if I could take the cat flap I'm at. So I put it up my sleeve. Oh my goodness. Isn't that thing fucking... Whatever. I guess she does have big sleeves. Really? Then I rather forgot about it. So I found myself in Mr. Windebank's shop with it later that night. It's sort of big. Because doesn't it make big holes? Whatever. It has to be big. With big saw blades. I see. 
And then... After Miss Naruho had, uh, had left the shop, I started to think. That door started to play on my mind. The storeroom door, you mean? Yes, if Gino was anywhere in the shop, I realized it could only be behind that door. And then at that moment, the little device I had up my sleeve sprang to mind. I was so worried about Gina. I simply had to know. I mean, technically you didn't know there was a crime scene at that point, right? The problem is more that you didn't, like, tell people. Then again, if she told people, then that would mean that technically, probably, maybe, uh, Inspector Gregson would have been able to do that. Why she didn't tell us at the very least. I get why it had to be that for, like, the case to play out as it did in the trial, but, eh. It's captured in a photographic print of the shop by one of Hurley's Red Hand recorders. Indeed, it was one of the uh, it was one of the first importance to uh, that point. Precisely when the people was made, that information would prove to be Mr. Narhodo's greatest weapon. Though naturally, without proof, it would have amounted to nothing. But when I looked through the hole in the door, he saw that. The sight that met my eyes made my blood run cold. Thoughts started to run through my mind. I remember that trial two months earlier. The trial of Magnus McGilded. I thought about how he had manipulated the evidence and arranged false testimony to secure his freedom. It made the British justice system feel very dark and sinister to me. And then a terrible thought occurred to me. What if... What if some wicked criminal was planning to do the same thing now? Uh... I get it, okay, fine. Like, I don't think it's a good reason, but it's enough of a reason for someone to do something. Sort of like what she did. I don't think it's a good reason, like, I think she's, sh whatever. Still a little irks me, but at least they're trying to explain it. Uh, because from the appearance of the crime scene, it looked exactly as though Gina had shot Mr. Windebank. Even though I was sure she would never have done such a thing. You were worried that the true culprit would try to frame her for the crime. That's right. Then I realized it would be very difficult for anyone to give false testimony in this case. What do you mean? Well, the crime appeared to have happened behind the doors of a locked room. For someone to have claimed falsely to have witnessed it, there would have to be a way to see beyond that door. Ah. Uh, but which the people would be the very thing? Only the people I had made wasn't actually there until after the crime had been committed, of course. And the criminal would know that, so it wouldn't make any difference. The possibility of a rather ingenious trap was there, was it not? A, a trap? Is that why she did it? So, is that why you kept it a secret, Susie? You never mentioned that you made the peephole to anyone. Not even the police. I mean, you still sort of fucking told us, at least. Whatever. I know, and I knew at the time what I was doing was wrong. A criminal offense, even. That's why I decided to confide in Mr. Sholmes. If Miss Narhoto was completely backed into a corner with no other possible means of escape, the truth about the people could save him. That was my plan. She really does think of everything. B but then, why didn't you just tell me everything before the trial began? My dear fellow, you're not thinking straight. I am thinking straight. Fuck you, Sholmes. If she had done that, it would have rendered you complicit in the whole escapade. Ah. Uh, you could have been disbarred if you had not seen- If you had been seen to have knowingly tampered with the crime scene. So Mrs. Zano decided to shoulder the burden of responsibility alone. For your sake, and miss the strades. Mrs. Zano. The truth is, when it happened, I did it because... I lost a little of my faith in the law. Oh. I was worried that the right person wouldn't be convicted of the crime. The moment I allowed myself to think that. Is the moment I lost my right to call myself a judicial assistant. 
That's, I guess, fair. He didn't. He's not comparable to what he did. Graydon is the one who lied in the witness stand, using the people as a way to Im uh, implicate Gina. And besides, if the people, uh, if the people inconsistency hadn't existed, I'm not at all sure she would have been acquitted in the end. We sort of had him on the ropes before he came up with that. Mm -hmm. We have to ask what Gregson would have uh, given him information-wise otherwise. Mrs. Otto, what you did? Save Gina's life. Well, with your kind words, Mr. Arhoda, you saved me too from my regrets. Ah, uh, well, we must all be thankful that Miss Lestrade's freedom has been assured. Yes, exactly. Although some of the loose ends in the trial will continue to play in my mind, I'm sure. The revelation that these boxes contain secret messages. Uh, Mr. Narhodo. What a triumph to work that out! I'm full of admiration! Well, actually, that argument wasn't quite as compelling as I thought it was. Oh, it wasn't? There was a communication officer among the jury members, you see, a telegraph operator. And she said that the majority of the sounds on the disc were just meaningless tones. They might have been encoded. As one would expect, after all, we are talking about secret government communications. No doubt they were written in cipher to avoid being readily understood, should they have been interpreted. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, encoded, I just thought of that. The other option... Uh, <laughs> the other option was that... I guess, yeah, that makes sense for the jury member. In Cypher, uh, I see. So then, we could never have hoped to understand the message anyway. Nonsense, my dear fellow. It's quite a zero pipe problem, I assure you. Well, Cyphers can be undecoded, right? It can be unencoded, decoded, words. A so -gi What? Well, that can't be a real word, can it? Oh, wait. Isn't that, uh, Kazuma's last name? Asogi. Wait, Iris, what did you just say? Oh, uh, so uh, I just said Asogi. Does, does that word mean something to you? Means something? It was the name of my best friend. What? But how? How do you know that name, Iris? Oh, I wrote it down during the trial before, when the message was playing on the music box. She transcribed it on the fly? She really is a genius. I thought the message probably wouldn't be written out in plain Morse code, so I tried various ways to interpret it. But well, whatever I tried, the words just didn't seem to make any sense. That is, in English at least. Oh. It suddenly occurred to me, you see. There's more than one Morse code, not just the English variety. Various countries around the world have altered and added to Morse code to use it in their own languages. I, I don't believe it. Are you saying? That's right. I've only actually seen a chart of Japanese Morse code once before. But I think it's based on the Iroha pangram, isn't it? And you mean to say that in Japanese Morse code, the message says Asagi? Yeah, I think so. Sorry, but I don't remember all the Japanese Morse code. Uh, Iris, would you let me see that? Mrs. Otto, do you know it? Do you know Japanese Morse code? Yes, I spent some time studying it. Because I'm quite sure that Morse code would uh, become ever more important for international communications. Then might I recommend, my dear madam, that you focus your efforts on the English version. <laughs> Be that as it may, Iris, show me the message. Of course. Okay. But what this what can this possibly mean? Whatever is in that long sequence of supposedly meaningless, uh, meaningless dots and dashes. It's made the color drain from Sasada-san's face. There's no doubt this message is written in Japanese Morse code and not a cipher. So the British Empire has been using Japanese for our sacred communications? I don't understand the reason why, but 
Well, if they use like if they reference a Japanese person, it might have been to Japan. The message appears to be a list of four people's names. Four names. The first is K. Asaki. Kazumaski. Why? Why was his name on that disc? The second is A. Shin. Shin. I don't recognize that name. The third, T. Uh, Guragusen. Gurag. Gregson? Oh. Oh, yeah, that's probably like the. Okay. I would seem that Tobias Gregson is the third man on the list. What's his name doing in the secret government communication as well? And the last name? What's the matter, Mrs. Zato? Oh, it's gonna be Reaper? It's just so strange. So unexpected. Oh, what is it, Susie? Don't keep us in suspense. The last name is J. Wilson. What? Wilson? John H. Wilson. Y y you, you mean Daddy? Uh, it only says Jay Wilson, so I'm afraid I cannot be sure. Then, after the four names, it reads, if I translate from Japanese, that is all four. And that's the end of the message. Or rather, the end of what you noted down, Iris. Hmm. Okay, I was expecting Reaper of the Bailey, like, to, like, confirm that speculation I had before. Believe it. Who would have ever? Who would have? Who would have ever had? Who would ever have thought that this disc contained Japanese Morse code? Let's make a strange list of some disturbingly familiar names. Was it beyond this particular message? Is a communication of some kind between Great Britain and the Empire of Japan? So, Daddy could be in Japan then? Where Susie and Runo come from? Oh well. Hmm, no, it's not a very it's not very likely really, is it? I mean, there are thousands of people with the surname Wilson, and there must be lots of J's among them. Yeah, it is fairly common. But Watson wouldn't nearly be as common. Professor John H. Wilson, visiting Professor of Medicine at the Imperial Yume University. We can't tell Iris about that now, we just can't. Lingering plot threads! This is so strange. Somehow, in solving the case of Mr. Windebank's murder today, I feel like I've rolled back a boulder at the mouth of a very dark cave. I do wonder. If perhaps it's a dark cave that we shouldn't go wandering inside. Oh, I know a little bit about Japanese mythology. And there she has to go. Oh dear, the ship is going to set sail soon. Yes, it seems so. I'll sail on that steamship first to the port of Dunkirk in France. Then I'll change onto a larger, uh, larger passenger vessel bound for Japan. You're really going then, Susie? We wish you safe passage, Miss Suzano. Thank you so much. I wish all of you the very best. Mrs. Otto, I... I had hoped to have you always by my side to guide me and support me. Mr. Naruto? Please, come back soon. As far as I'm concerned, you really are the very best judicial assistant in the world. I'm, I'm quite sure. I'll be back before you know it. Really, Susie? Oh, no, don't forget, Iris. I made you a promise I've yet to fulfill. A promise? About your manuscript. Ah. Uh, oh, yes. The, the hounds of Bas uh, the Baskervilles. Well, I'll be waiting for you then, Susie. A promise is a promise. Definitely, Iris. Naruhodo. Yes. 
Do you remember the first time we met? Yes, of course. On the SS Buria, when I was dragged out from that wardrobe still half asleep. If I remember rightly, you threw me halfway across the cabin with a uh, Suzada takedown. You know very well what I'm talking about. I'm talking about after that. Well, didn't we first meet, like, before the first... You did say first met. Didn't we meet before, like, my trial? I thought you, like, showed up just very briefly. Like, in the court, uh, in the antechamber before that trial. It's strange, but being thrown together as we were in that case, I somehow felt straight away. That you were the perfect person to continue Kazuma-sama's uh, Sama's great legacy. This is not him. And my instincts were right. I really want to believe. No. I'm sure that. I'll be back soon. Farewell until then. Somehow we seem to have come to the end of the adventures of Ryunosuke Naruhodo. Or the first volume, at least. Looking back now, it feels as though fate has led me on this journey. Fate led me to becoming a lawyer, to traveling halfway around the world, to meeting the great detective. I'm sure there'll be trials and tribulations ahead. Of course there will. But whatever happens, I know I'll be able to turn my fortunes around. What a fucking way to send someone off. After all, I have the greatest friends in the world, on my side. Oh, that's nice. Credits? Feels like a credit. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, Mr. Noho deal. Yes, Mr. Sholmes. I was totally not expecting credits to hit there. Oh, I have some rather awkward news. Uh, the railway company has decided to sue over the Special Express train, apparently. Huh? <laughs> ah, it caused such a commotion on the line. All the other trains had to wait at stations. Yo, yeah, oh, that's pretty expensive. But really, we would never have made it to Dover in time otherwise. Anyway, I explained everything and how it was all your fault. What? Uh, <laughs> huh? Huh? No, I believe a formal complaint should be delivered to your office tomorrow. But not to worry, my dear fellow. According to Mrs. Zato, you love defending yourself in court. Huh? 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 It's all right. I'm perfectly happy to testify. You really didn't look like the sort of man who could do something so outrageous. Uh, see? Uh, Mr. Sholmes. Oh, it's one of those. Oh, it's been so long since I've been to one of these points in these games. Yes? A word. If you don't mind. Why, certainly. Anywhere you like. Bellow it out, my dear fellow. Oh, yes. I love Runo's words. And I know just the one he'll use here. Then, I really must say... Objection. Okay, yep, there's, there's the credits moment. And the epilogue, typically, I think they typically do at the end of these. We get to see, so, okay, no, just credits proper. Okay, awesome. Yay, we finished it. Oh my goodness, we finished it. And there's another game. Oh, here we go. In the following weeks, hundreds of music box arrived at Baker Streets from all over Europe. Okay, I also, uh, something was afoot. Though it transpired, I had ordered them all myself. So I advertised them uh, for sale with, used by Mr. Sholmes to solve an important case. And the money I've earned. <laughs> Consulting detective work pays a pittance by comparison. <laughs> so 
So I assume he lied about the train thing. You know, he probably didn't. You know what? Never mind. Ah, uh, I haven't slept a wink. The manuscript is due tomorrow now. When I'm this busy, Hurley usually cooks me breakfast. Well, cooks is an overstatement. Or some dry toast and insipid coffee. I need Miss Susie and her lovely Japanese breakfast. I like that they're like properly doing credits like it's part of this too. Witness! Your testimony is riddled with contradictions! Yeah, exactly. Rarely, uh, rarely do rare coins coins hide under rare stakes themselves. Well, uh, I don't know Sonosa's father's an innocent man. Are you calling the son a liar? Witnesses, my courtroom is no place for your petty arguments. Okay, uh, yeah, I guess that's their epilogue. They get they get tried for the shit they did in that one that I don't remember very clearly anymore. Having delivered the Russian dancer uh, to shore in Shanghai, I laid low on the steamship for a while. But last night, I apprehended an extremely suspicious Japanese national on board. I've done nothing wrong. All I did was give Wangai's offspring refuge in my pocket. A man brings some kittens on board and suddenly he's a hardened criminal. It's not fair. Okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. You love Wagahai, but not, uh, not the kittens. Oh, that's, uh... That, that does change a little bit about that impression of him, about leaving the cat behind. Scientific investigation will be the gold standard for policing in the new age. I dream of a world governed by the tenets of order and discipline. Like a great clock, in fact, whose hundreds of parts match together in perfect unison. Now, if you all excuse me, I have but two minutes and 37 seconds until my next appointment. Yeah, he's still suspicious. Like, he didn't play much role here, but... Uh, Lace Rance Magazine is out, and I'm in it again. Whenever I say that one line she wrote now, I get a standing ovation. Wanna hear it? Hmm. Not so bad, I suppose. Von Amateur. <laughs> uh, you got a catch- you got a catchphrase. Ugh. Relationship puts me to shame. I see he is not in jail. <laughs> I wonder how much trouble he actually got in. It's fine. We'll lose the second game. Been visiting the old girl on a daily basis, of course. Johnny, my own jailbird. Must say, battling with those bally stairs every day is done one as well the dick bag, uh, ticky bag. Uh, managing rather well with the house works, too. Got this maid business taped up, I say. I uh, hope the gossipy neighbors don't realize the man of the house is his own maid. What did she do again to get put in jail? And I don't remember, man. My Rally is back on the beat again, all thanks to the Reaper. There's nothing I enjoy more these days than hunting on a small change in the gutter. I'm a better Bobby now, looking out for Londoners at the job Albanese and my lovely wife. Oh, uh, oh, Rally. Okay, they can just go fuck off. <laughs> I sort of so tired of this, dude. Uh. Uh, looks like I'm gonna be doing time for a bit now. But Tyrus comes every day for Nata, so it ain't too boring. She's always going on about them cares what Sholmes is looking into. Oh, this case is the Sholmes is looking into. Criminal investigations are kind of interesting when he gets into them. Oh, I feel like I know what her path for is gonna be. I still really like her design. She actually might have my favorite design of all the characters in this. I like that sort of like steampunk vested look, I guess. Yes, I renounce my upbringing. I renounce my upbringing and chose a life of sophisticated crime, but regrets, please. Give over, bruv. This ain't the ash we used to know. We got time in here to plan the comeback of Milton's Gokin Milk Run, right? The 
three musket bullets. It's milking the neighborhood for all it's worth. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Are they actually... Well, you know, best of luck to them. I don't expect them to show up again. Best of luck to them. You know, they're still blinking occasionally. <laughs> Just, okay, everyone. Oh, we're supposed to uh, keep posing. This past six months have been a time I shall remember for, for uh, forevermore. Painful goodbyes and wonderful encounters. I've come to realize that's what my life, uh, what life is all about. Naruto san I promise. Your assistant will return to you one day. But for now, I leave you with many memories and a heartfelt wish that life will treat you well. Oh, she can't make eye contact. Oh, That's a nice picture. Like an another stylized credits thing? Or like the rest of it? Because obviously that wasn't everyone, so. Okay, time to properly um, talk about the game. I would say right now, this is my favorite Ace Attorney game. It's been a long ass time since I like um, thought about or played any of them. Because I partly ended up putting it off because a lot of the games I played were ones for the channel, and... I think at some point I tried to do Great Ace Attorney, like, via emulation, but emulation just sort of, like, did not work on my computer. Especially with recording at the same time. Oh, there was that, like, lady who lied in that one case. I forgot about her. I wonder if she'll come up again. Fuck, I wonder how much I'm gonna need to remember. But yeah, no, this is like by and far my favorite Ace Attorney game at the moment. I'd say Apollo Justice was my favorite before. Uh, mainly because like I like Apollo and stuff like that, and I generally like the sort of more grounded, I guess more grounded feel to that one. And this gave off all the same vibes that I like from Apollo that made me like it in terms of tone and stuff like that. Uh, the Ace Attorney games are fun. I like them. I like the cases can be a bit stupid at times, obviously. Uh, that's just sort of how it works. I think there was only one time that I really needed to look something up in this. Or at least since I started recording again. <laughs> um, so I do think it was better for that. And I think part of the reason that helped... Oh, leaving Kazuma behind. Don't worry, you'll help in the Nuzlocke run whenever I post that. Um, what was I saying? I guess one of the things that I think helps for those is, like, the logic, if it's very, like, all the systems are sort of a bit more grounded. Ace Attorney can be a bit ridiculous at times, right? And there's a lot of ridiculousness here, but this felt like a more grounded take on it. While, albeit all the other stuff. But part of the reason it felt like a more grounded take... Aww. Are they gonna come back on screen? Yeah. There we go. And I assume she'll be behind for a little bit. Uh, there we go. So. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, hello, buddy. Uh, basically, the thing I think that makes this work as well as it does is, like, all the systems are incredibly based in, like, actual just, like, figuring shit out. You have, like, some of the concepts from before that might have been, like, mini games, but they're actually just, like, they feel like they're part of actually figuring stuff out, part of the grounded element where you have stuff like the jury uh, where you can react to other people instead of like say I, I think the example because it's been a while since I've done the other stuff instead of stuff having like the uh, magical mystical stuff of the original trilogy where you had like the Magatama and uh, that involved like trying to figure out people's lies and a sort of like a little mini game with mystical elements to it uh, that like tied into the logic uh, and then you had like Apollo's thing where he had sort of like a genetic ability where he could sort of tell tells and he's like a bracelet like that was better in that grounded but it's also a bit you know out there 
Instead, you have stuff like uh, juries and people reacting and all that sort of stuff. I feel like the systems in place they did for like progressing the trial and figuring stuff out were so much more. They naturally flowed into each other, and you didn't like it. Didn't felt like feel like they jumped the shark at all in any of like those elements, and they like even like unjump sharks, I guess. All the sort of like over-the-top elements were very well meshed into the grounded elements, I guess, is probably the way I'd phrase it. Uh, I mean, the characters are great, too. I, uh, Story-wise, obviously, I feel like this was a good game. Um, I wouldn't like sit there and tell you like it was the best thing in the world, story-wise. I thought it was quite good. That third trial is probably still my favorite trial, just because there's so much gray to it that it may have got thrown out the window later. At that time, the fact that like you were fighting for someone who was guilty and fuck, like fucking it up made that fact that you do want to put trust in your client. It's such an interesting dynamic that made that trial so interesting from that point. I still think that's my favorite trial in the series at the moment. Uh, the other ones after that were good. This last one was good as well. Uh, quite good. I think we have a nice, good way to end here. Interviews and research assistant. Music box. Oh, interesting. Oh, so they did. They had like outsourced research and stuff for music box stuff. Interesting. Uh, but overall, I'd say yeah, it, it had the same general quality of story. I think, while also like not having any of the elements that might significantly take away from it. You know. <laughs> And it definitely makes me very interested in a sequel. Finn. Oh, wait. Oh. Because <laughs> of course it does that. <laughs> of course it like goes to like sleep uh, through the credits. Was that timed well or was that like in the back? Oh, wow. Wow. What the hell is that? That's a really nice artwork. Ooh. I'm not sure it's a pro like I, I was like, ooh, can I make that the thumbnail? We had like a couple of really nice artworks here. Uh but yeah. No, we We have a second one. Don't forget, we got a second one. So in terms of a second one to note, uh, and coming back to this, I don't know when I'm going to do it. I have a bunch of stuff I want to play, but I do want to do it before the end of the year. It is currently early July. Uh, there's a bunch of other stuff I want to do, but I do want to come back to it before the end of the year. I will note that. Uh, I'm not making any promises. It might be earlier. It might be later. Uh, depends where I go in terms of my mind and wanting to do it, but I will definitely do it at some point. Uh, the other thing I notice as part of all this is that in these special contents, there is a... I notice this one just like going around before, and it says you can only use it in the second game. So there's like these special outfits, and they all look sort of interesting. Uh, I mean, that one's a little bit weird in terms of like, it just looks like he's going out for a festival. I like that sort of like steam, uh, steampunk Victoria look, uh, Victorian look, so... I assume these must have been like DLCs for the game, where you could like change up the outfit for the second one. Which I find very interesting, and I'll almost definitely use it at some point. But. For now, whenever we come back to it, we'll, we'll not use those immediately, at the very least. So, uh, Whenever that does come up, I'll see you all then. And for now, I won't say goodbye. I'll see. I'll say uh, something a bit different. I'll see you until the next time, when we will return to the Great Ace Tyranny. Until then, drive safely, everyone. <laughs>